Hello YouTube, Goddard Radio Mosca here again with another beer review for you, as is usual. Now for this one, we're uh, going to go to a town just about 15 minutes to the northwest of Heidelberg here and have a look at the town of Mannheim. And I think this is actually the only brewery that they have in Mannheim. So to give you their full name, it's the Privatbrauerei Eichbaum and we're going to take a little look at the Pilsner beer today. And in Heidelberg it's actually quite common that you find these beers uh, on sale in the single bottles in some of the Turkish eateries. And I do think it actually pays really well with these sort of Turkish breads for the dooner and for the pizzas and stuff like that so a really good beer for that in fact so if you're in the sort of Heidelberg Mannheim area of Germany and you fancy one of the pizzas or things like that give this guy a try I do think it goes really well with that so as is usual with my beer reviews I'll take you through a brief history of the brewery tell you a little bit about the local area but as I always say if you're simply interested in the tasting of this beer just go on towards the second part of the video and you will catch that and the link to the brewery website is in the video description there so you can read up on the brewery yourself if you feel the, feel the wish to if you like. So as I mentioned the brewery is from the city of Mannheim in Baden-Württemberg and it's pretty much the centre point between Frankfurt and Stuttgart of course two of the major cities in western Germany and it's just about 15 minutes to the northwest of Heidelberg. The town has a population of about 300,000 and actually has a very famous music history. It was said to be the home of one of the best orchestras in Europe during the 18th and 19th centuries, although the city was unfortunately almost completely destroyed by the Commonwealth and US Air Forces during the Second World War. And today it's actually quite interesting because when you go to the city you can see the really old architecture and the sort of water tower and the palace right in the sort of centre, kind of roundabout of the city if you like. There's a big circle that you can drive around and then when you go outside of that you see the, the sort of things that were put up after the war and of course the very modern architecture as well so you can see a whole host of different things in the city but it actually has many many offices today it's a very industrial town today and there's a lot of offices from the likes of BASF Commerzbank and all of these sort of big companies in Germany but to move on to the brewery history itself Eichbaum Brewery was founded in the year 1679 by the Mannheim councillor Jean Duchesne and his surname in German uh, translates in German to Eichbaum which is of course what the beer is named after the brewery and in English this actually translates to oak tree so it really is oak tree brewery if you like. So apparently the original brewery was completely destroyed during the French Palatinate Wars of Succession and this uh, the whole city of Mannheim in fact was destroyed but the brewery was rebuilt in one of the squares called P5 and if you go and visit the city of course you'll see that it's in a block system and I believe this is something that the Americans actually took from Europe and did for themselves. I think a lot of German engineers made America in these sort of block systems in fact and I'm not sure if P5 actually does refer to this in, uh, in Mannheim so locals please let me know if that is the case in Mannheim. It's always interesting to hear that. But in the square P5, this brewery that was built here is actually the oldest building in this square. But in 1873 the brewery had to actually move once again because they needed to increase their capacity due to the huge demand for the beer. And this time the brewery was moved to the Kfair Taylor uh, Street in the Volgelegen district, sorry my pronunciation actually, it's a bit of a weird word to say, in the Volgelegen district in, uh, in Mannheim and where it, this is where it remains to this day. And apparently the brewery is actually one of the most modern facilities in Baden-Württemberg and they concentrate their sales as a regional brewery in Baden-Württemberg, Rhineland and Palatine and of course the south of the state of Hesse as well so a really regional brewery if you like but apparently the beer uh, is known is known lovingly by the locals in Mannheim as corpse water and this is because the brewery is actually located right next to a graveyard and the brewing water is pumped directly from the earth below but the water quality isn't affected because there's several layers of clay as they pump the water out there. So that's your brief history of the Eichbaum Brewery, of course. I think that's quite funny that it's called uh, Corpse Water, if you like. Quite an interesting thing there. So uh, to tell you about the other beers you can get from the brewery, you can get the Premium Pils, the uh, the Lager, the Pilsner, which is this guy here, the Export, you can get the Hefeweizens, of course, the Hell, Dunkel and Kristall. You can get the Leichter, the Keller Beer, the Kubfelzer Helles, the Rotus Rauch, uh, Raube Beer, which is a Dunkel style beer, apparently meant to be really good. You can get the Kleinus Pils, the Winter beer and the Apostulator and those are, the Apostulator is meant to be a really interesting one so hopefully I can get that for you to try as well and they also have some several special lemonades and malt drinks that this company also do so I don't know I'll maybe see if I can find some of those for you as well but I'm running short of time in Germany during my stay here but all of their beers are brewed with local malts and hops from the Hallertau region and apparently the brewery actually have their own lab and they're regularly, regularly checked with the German Agricultural Society and the International Food Standard 
standards. And they also apparently have their own yeast cultivation and of course all the beer is brewed in accordance with the Reinheitsgebot. So let's have a little look at the bottle and cap as is usual with my beer reviews. I'll just bring it up there. As you can see, there's the sort of hop flowers here, and you can see some of the, the other stuff as well. I think that's uh, is that barley, I guess, for the malts, probably. And you can see the copper brewing kettles there, in fact, and you can just see a nice big oak tree for the badge there. And as you can see, it says, Site, Zeit, uh, 1679, of course, the year that the brewery was founded by Jean Duchesne. So, quite cool, actually. On the back, it just says, uh, this beer won the Goldener Prize in uh, 2013 in fact and by the DLG so I think it's, it's an award winning beer if you like and as I say it does actually pair very well with the sort of Turkish style food so quite interesting in that regard there's the top label of this guy as well and it has that uh, badge I was talking about where it won the prize and this is the Eichbaum bottle cap here and it is unique in fact for each of these breweries I'm actually getting some really crappy light in this room I apologise for the light on some of these videos it's really bad but you can see uh, as you can see it's quite nicely presented I would say, but without further ado, let's get this guy open and get on with the tasting. This guy is a 4.9% 4 Pilsner beer, quite a popular percentage for beer to be in Germany, of course. But let's get it open and see how we get on with the tasting. Oh, there we are, it didn't quite open in that way, I must have pulled it away too quickly. But anyway, 4.9% Pilsner beer, let's get this guy into the glass and see how we get on here. Very pale beer, in fact. Not really getting any strong aromas from it as I pour it so far, but we'll give it a, a closer smell if you like. Typical big German head on this beer. Smelling a little grassy as it gets closer to me in fact, so I think I'm going to get all of this in the glass there. It's actually poured quite nicely. So as you can see, it looks like a premium beer. It's crystal, it's pretty much crystal clear, a pale straw golden colour. I can see my fingers. I'll show you on the camera there, you can see my fingers through it. Actually, really very little carbonation visible in this guy. The head is about was two fingers, it's kind of going down now. Actually a bumpy head rather than a frothy one, but a very kind of good looking beer, premium beer as you would expect. It's a ma it's a macro produced beer. Looks really attractive. In terms of the aroma. Very grassy, a little bit of kind of corn sweetness in fact if you like, a little bit of mild citrus as well but mainly a grassy beer. A bit of yeast and some kind of herbal character if you like, there is a bit of a doughy yeast character to it that's more apparent when you kind of take a deeper whiff of it. The head's actually just gone right down to a foamy layer so quite poor retention of the head in fact but that's not such an important thing I would say. In Germany though it's quite important because they love a good head on their beer. But yeah, it's quite a, a citrusy and grassy smelling beer. There is a good bit of kind of bready yeast when you take a little bit of a deeper breath in, but there is a kind of herbal character underlying to this guy in the, uh, in the aroma as well. So without further ado, let's give it a taste and see how we get on. It's actually got quite a bit of earthy character to it. That's one of the... That's the thing that's kind of sticking out to me so far. Definitely. Definitely a little bit of earthy character to this one. But you're also getting a, a bit of spicy malt in fact. It does have a kind of spicy effect to it which is quite interesting. Maybe that's why it goes so well with the sort of Turkish foods, the Duner breads and things. But yeah, there is a sort of yeasty and doughy character to it as well. But it's mainly grassy on the end with a good bit, like I say, it has a good bit of earthy character. And there is a, just a little bit of that yeast kind of lying there on the, on the finish as well. But a bit of metallic character to it also, I would say, which is unusual because it's coming out of a bottle rather than a, rather than a can, which is of course where you get most of the metallic character from. But yeah, the malt base with this one, kind of, uh, it really, it actually isn't too prominent at all. You get a tiny little bit of kind of yeasty bread at the start, but then it's really dominated by the hops. You've got a good bit of grassy and citrus character in there, but the overpowering flavour with it is definitely the sort of earthy hops. And 
like I say, you are getting just a little bit of, uh, of metallic character in there as well. The aftertaste is just a little bit of bready yeast, but it, it is qu quite overpowering with the uh, with the kind of earthy character, in fact. And just a little bit of the grassy character is also kind of remaining there as well. So, quite an interesting one, in fact. I've not had many Pilsner beers that are so earthy, if you like, and this guy definitely is that, but it does have just a kind of little bit of spice to it as well, which is, like I say, the most likely reason why it goes so well with the sort of Duner kebabs and, and, uh, and, and what do you call them, pizzas and stuff like that. So that's probably why it kind of goes so well with these guys. In terms of the mouthfeel, it's light-bodied, maybe slightly just pushing in towards the kind of mid-bodied character if you like. It's actually quite a dry beer and the carbonation soft but it's somewhere between watery and oily on the mouthfeel but at the same time it is actually quite crisp. It's unusual in both of it, both its kind of mouthfeel and the sort of balance of flavour if you like. Like I say I've never had a pills that's actually had quite so much earthy character to it. And it does have that little bit of spicy malt as well, which is, like I say, maybe why it goes so well with the sort of pita breads and things. The earthy character just adds a nice little dimension to it. But overall, it's an interesting pilsner. And like I say, it does pair with that kind of Turkish food quite well. So if you like that sort of thing, give this guy a try and see how you get on. If you've tried it yourself, please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on this beer. My thoughts would be, it is an interesting one to try for the type of food that I've mentioned, but... Overall, it doesn't stand out so much uh, in, in the kind of wider context of German beer. So let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer. Always interesting to hear them. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I thank you again for your continuing support on my YouTube channel. I really like doing these beer reviews for you. And please, as I say, help the channel grow. And thanks again for watching. I will catch you soon with another beer review. Cheers.